In this video we share Pope Benedict XVI's prophetic message to the Church in Germany. During his last trip to Germany, at Freiburg in Breisgau, on September 24 and 25, 2011, Benedict XVI gave two addresses to German bishops, clergy, and lay leaders. Reports at the time indicated they were not well received by the audience. From the vantage of the present crisis, however, they appear prescient. Here follow extended excerpts from the two discourses. We live at a time that is broadly characterized by a subliminal relativism that penetrates every area of life. Sometimes this relativism becomes aggressive, when it opposes those who say that they know where the truth or meaning of life is to be found. And we observe that this relativism exerts more and more influence on human relationships and on society. This is reflected, among other things, in the inconstancy and fragmentation of many people's lives and in an exaggerated individualism. Many no longer seem capable of any form of self-denial or of making a sacrifice for others. Even the altruistic commitment to the common good, in the social and cultural sphere or on behalf of the needy, is in decline. Others are now quite incapable of committing themselves unreservedly to a single partner. People can hardly find the courage now to promise to be faithful for a whole lifetime, the courage to make a decision and say, now I belong entirely to you, or to take a firm stand for fidelity and truthfulness and sincerely to seek a solution to their problems. The church in Germany is superbly organized. But behind the structures, is there also a corresponding spiritual strength, the strength of faith in the living God. We must honestly admit that we have more than enough by way of structure but not enough by way of spirit. I would add, the real crisis facing the church in the Western world is a crisis of faith. If we do not find a way of genuinely renewing our faith, all structural reform will remain ineffective. If the church, in Pope Paul VI's words, is now struggling to model itself on Christ's ideal, this can only result in its acting and thinking quite differently from the world around it, which it is nevertheless striving to influence. Ecclesiam Swam, 58. In order to accomplish her mission, she will need again and again to set herself apart from her surroundings, to become in a certain sense unworldly. In the concrete history of the Church, however, a contrary tendency is also manifested, namely that the Church becomes self-satisfied, settles down in this world, becomes self-sufficient and adapts herself to the standards of the world. Not infrequently, she gives greater weight to organization and institutionalization than to her vocation to openness towards God, her vocation to opening up the world towards the other. In order to accomplish her true task adequately, the Church must constantly renew the effort to detach herself from her tendency towards worldliness and once again to become open towards God. In this she follows the words of Jesus, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world and in precisely this way Jesus gives himself to the world. One could almost say that history comes to the aid of the Church here through the various periods of secularization, which have contributed significantly to her purification and inner reform. Secularizing trends, whether by expropriation of church goods, or elimination of privileges or the like, have always meant a profound liberation of the Church from forms of worldliness, for in the process she, as it were, sets aside her worldly wealth and once again completely embraces her worldly poverty. History has shown that, when the Church becomes less worldly, her missionary witness shines more brightly. Once liberated from material and political burdens and privileges, the Church can reach out more effectively and in a truly Christian way to the whole world, she can be truly open to the world. She can live more freely her vocation to the ministry of divine worship and service of neighbor. It is not a question here of finding a new strategy to relaunch the Church. Rather, it is a question of setting aside mere strategy in seeking total transparency, not bracketing or ignoring anything from the truth of our present situation, but living the faith fully here and now in the utterly sober light of day, appropriating it completely, and stripping away from it anything that only seems to belong to faith, 
but in truth is mere convention or habit. To put it another way, for people of every era, and not just our own, the Christian faith is a scandal. That the eternal God should know us and care about us, that the intangible should at a particular moment have become tangible, that he who is immortal should have suffered and died on the cross, that we who are mortal should be given the promise of resurrection and eternal life, for people of any era, to believe all this is a bold claim. This scandal, which cannot be eliminated unless one were to eliminate Christianity itself, has unfortunately been overshadowed in recent times by other painful scandals on the part of the preachers of the faith. A dangerous situation arises when these scandals take the place of the primary scandal alone of the cross and in so doing they put it beyond reach, concealing the true demands of the Christian gospel behind the unworthiness of those who proclaim it. Thank you for supporting my channel. May God bless you and keep you. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us.